Who are you going to call again? Ghostbusters 2, the follow-up to the smash hit original movie and the smash hit original game. Activision released the original version and they also released the sequel. And starting off on my brand new Spectrum 48K Plus, because we had the pictures of my 48K on Dan Dare 3. So I thought, hey, let's do a little bit more 48K. Don't worry, we'll cross over to the Plus 2 a little bit later on, because you want that Plus 2 uh, music. And you'll see the Oliver Twins name go past as well, for they were the producers of this game. So we start off here with some uh, digitized graphics explaining the plot. You know Ghostbusters 2. And, well, hopefully you do. It's like Ghostbusters 1, but not quite as good. Developed by Forcefield and produced by the Oliver Twins. And you do get a nice 48k rendition of the soundtrack that you would miss out on if you had the 128k version loaded. Another reason why this is on my new 48k plus. And down we go. The first level sees you lower down into the sewer where you have to collect some slime. Or oh, the old, old railway, isn't it? The old railroad. You have three types of weapons. Your plasma bolt, ghostbuster, thingy, pool cannon is going to kill me. I'm not knowing they proton pack. That's it. And, and Mensky. And you've got some weapons you can throw up as well, like that little thing across the top there. And there's these hands that come and molest your rope and uh, try to cut it. You can see what depth you're at. I'm depth 34 at the moment. And you have to collect everything you need to collect the slime on the way down. Here we are on my pl grey plus two. And there's power-ups on the way down. And there's courage. And look at Ray's face there. He's terrified. Is it Ray? I can no longer tell. It's so contorted. That is probably the same Ghostbuster. Oh, all of them, isn't it? C64 version. Superb on the original Ghostbusters 1 game. How's Ghostbusters 2 going to pan out? And these digitised graphics are apparently digitised from uh, movie stills, apparently. And the control is quite different coming over from the Spectrum version. It's a little bit faster and slightly less refined. And the hands look a bit weird and I can't shoot them with my proton pack. Why can't I shoot them? Well, that's the end of that then. I'm used to the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. Apparently I can't shoot the molesting hands with uh, the proton pack in this version. Oh, collected a power up there. I mean, it's faster, I'll give it that. Zap gave this version 39%. And that's another power up you've got there. It's like a little force field thing. We're 60% of the way down. And apparently, whoa, whoa. To work your way, I mean, Ray's legs. I keep on saying it's Ray. I'm assuming it's Ray. His legs must be smashed about down again. Well, we found the Van Horn Railroad thing. Amstrad CPC version. I must have got this for Christmas 1989, along with Power Drift. It was the big Activision Christmas. They have two of the biggest games out that year. And uh, yeah, I had this on disc. Didn't arrive for Christmas Day. Uh, it arrived about a week later, I think. So I had nothing to play on Christmas Day. So uh, did you, uh, no soundtrack while this is going on, on the Amstrad version. Fairly nice digitized graphics. The Amstrad's Mode 1 lends itself well. They could have a few more colours in here. Uh, 
And down we go. And it's a full multicolour effort. Graphics are a little bit blocky, but I seem to remember these looking pretty good on my CTM644 monitor. And if it was much slower than the C64 version. I mean, yeah, it's especially pronounced. It's really chugging compared to that 64 version. But I don't remember this being a problem back in the day because this is a game I completed. Yes, me, I actually completed a game. I'm not going to do it this time, am I? We're 22% of the way down. My carriage is going down my face. Look at my face. Oh, I need to shoot in with my proton pack. So I can do it on the Amstrad version. Cheating C64 version. Grrr. Shakes fist. Another power up there. There are plenty. There's no time limit. The only limits are your courage and how much proton pack power you have. That's the most important weapon. I've got 50... Oh, I'm on using that at the moment. Those things are useful for getting rid of the, the hands. Right, we're down the bottom of the level now. I've got all the bits I need. I've got the jar. I've got everything I need to collect the slime. And my courage is going right down. But can I get the slime? Come on, come on, come on. Right. The vial of slime is filling up. You really need a force field when you're doing this. But I don't have one. Am I going to? Oh! Bottom. Nearly did it. Atari ST. I think my mate Chris had this on his ST. I could ask him, but he can never remember anything about what games he had. And I have to talk all over this, aren't I? Because this is sampling Ghostbusters, and I'm wondering if it would actually constitute a copyright um, thing on YouTube. So I'm going to keep on talking, uh, just generally going on, because there is a genuine danger with samples that that could actually happen. The digitised graphics on the ST and Amiga look really nice. And as I say, they are scanned from uh, film clips from the movie, apparently, because it's credited at the start of the game. So down we go. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty uncontrollable. It's, uh, it's like the C64 version, but worse. It's like when you're playing games in A1200 and it's running a bit too fast because it's meant for an A500. Or perhaps it's just because I've come across the Amstrad version, but it doesn't feel good at all. Ace gave the 16-bit versions 251 out of 1,000 using their rather unique rating system. Amiga Power, however, were less kind, but we'll come to that. You have to be facing the right way when you're collecting stuff on the 16-bit versions. This is the Amiga, and again, I had to be a little bit careful because the samples are going to be even better on the Amiga version. It's nice to have those samples on the ST as well, actually. But here we are on the Amiga, exactly the same digitised graphics and a rather naff stereo effect. On the music. Phew, I can stop talking now rather over, uh, over all of that. So down we go again. Yeah, so you must be facing what you're collecting and you have to be kind of at arm's length before it works. And even then, frankly, it doesn't always work. Oh, and apparently the C64 version is a bug in that as well, where sometimes things don't collect properly. I can imagine the programmers having great fun. They're making spitting noises when the baddies spit at you. 
All right, so I finally managed to collect that. I'm going to try and collect that one. It's not your arms, it's your legs needs to touch. I, I don't know why. It's really hard on the 16th version to pick stuff up. So here we are down the bottom on the ST version. My rope is very, very frayed. Can I get enough? I can. I can. Wow. And that's the end of the line for the ST version because I've tried multiple cracks and it took long enough to get the game to actually load. And then when I did find a version that loaded, the second disc actually doesn't work. So when it requires side B, it's game over. We'll come to disc swapping in a bit, however. Back to the Spectrum version. We're on my 48k plus. We're loading level two. So it's New Year's Eve. You must fight your way down Broadway, reaching the museum before midnight, basically. And again, they've bothered to do a 48k soundtrack. Most people would have left that just silent, but now they've done it properly. And you're in the Statue of Liberty and you use the fireball there to shoot the baddies. And you have little men who run along and they collect the slime. You control them with the space bar. But beware, there's zombies on the ground and they will eat your little men. So you have to press space again and they run back. Oh, and don't shoot your little men either. It looks rather lovely on the spectrum here, doesn't it? Especially that skyline in the background. C64 version, it's like evil, it's like fear. The Ghostbusters are back and help is near. Don't they use an NES controller on uh, to control the Statue of Liberty? Am I misremembering that in the movie? By the way, there is a PC version of this as well, an American version. Completely different game, not looking at it today. So when, when you look at the PC release of this game, yeah, it's it's a different, different game, different publisher. Not really relevant to what we're doing today. So there's a time limit on this level. And uh, your fireball also has limited lo amount of shots, which so when it comes to an end, there's a pause of a few seconds before it recharges. And you can run it into baddies as well as shooting them. Although if you run it into baddies on the C64, it immediately extinguishes. Whereas on the other versions, you can run it into baddies for the equivalent amount of shots before it would have extinguished, if you see what I mean. I think it's 10 shots. Amstrad CPC. And again, look at this, it looks lovely. Slow, yes, but really didn't bother me at the time. And you know what? Once I'm into it again, it still doesn't. It just looks good. There was no chance as producers, the Oliver Twins, were going to let this be a, a dodgy Spectrum port. He says, considering they... Well, no, the Dizzy, of course, is a CPC game, isn't it? It just looks like a Spectrum port. But they've given everyone the appropriate graphics for their system. These CPC graphics look really, really nice. Your slime's on the left, by the way, and, and what happens when you collect it is it replenishes the slime jar, um, but you lose slime from the slime jar when baddies hit you. So here we are on the Amiga. And some more nice digitised graphics. Vigo's evil still lives on in this painting drawing pal for me. He's Ghostbusters too. I mean, where have you been hiding if you don't know the plot of this? So I fight your way down Broadway. Blah, blah, blah. It's nice having digitised graphics from the movie in a game. It gives you a nice link between the two products. The movie's out. The game's out. Uh, all the other media out. The, you know, the music will be out. And it just links it all together really, really nicely. And it, I don't like the pew, pew, pew sound effect. It sounds like a really bad PD Space Invaders game. As I was saying, Ace gave the 16-bit versions 251 out of 1,000. Amiga Power were less kind. 
They called it lame and a disgrace. The game came on four discs on the ST and three on the Amiga. Um, yeah, I mean, the cracked version comes on two, so they could have got that down. But there was a thing back in the day where they would deliberately put games on more discs to make it seem like better value for money. And look, we're on Broadway in New York, and there's a big, ugly, orange thing jumping up and down, needing to be destroyed. Look at the ugly thing. Look at it. Oh, and the other thing your fireball can do is it can take the enemy's firepower. So if you put it in the way uh, between you and the Statue of Liberty, you can absorb the enemy's fire. Like that. That's quite neat. I like that. Sadly, one big baddie still only gives you one piece of slime. And here comes some slime and monsters. Oh, I'm going to lose it. But actual fact, I'm on infinite lives. So it doesn't matter. Nice Stay Puffed advert there. And eventually you've reached the end of the level. You're showing your how far along Broadway you are at the bottom of the screen. It is not quite real time. On the CPC it takes 10 minutes, but the game time is 15. It's like evil, it's like fear the Ghostbusters are here. Well done. You've reached the museum. Press space or fire. Oscar the baby, uh, woman from Aliens, uh, has been kidnapped by the enslaved, blah, blah, blah. It's Ghostbusters 2, you've seen it. Now, this is where I've got confused because I have read the instructions and I have completed the game back in the day. But, uh, yeah, this, this is a complete loss to me. Suddenly, the Ghostbusters 2 screen here is in mode 1. It's all become a bit different. We've got this isometric 3D view. And you have to lower the Ghostbusters down very, very slowly or they become stunned. There's, uh, there you go. And there you get, in the middle there, you get a digitised graphic as well. That's why they've done it in mode one. To get more pixels on the screen so you can get everything here on the screen. Uh, this, this level split across two screens, by the way. Absolute Action gave this version 94%. I can see it. I can see it. Um, I wouldn't quite give it that much, but um, certainly of all of the versions here, the scores I'm looking at, Spectrum version from your Sinclair, 62%. The um, the Amstrad version, yeah, it, it's actually pretty good. Same thing on the C64. For some inexplicable reason, you only get two Ghostbusters to do it and it looks really ugly and it's all low resolution and goodness knows what's going on you have to shoot the man there rescue the baby then shoot the painting and yeah i've got the baby i've got the baby i'm running around with the baby i've put the baby down i don't know why i put the baby down i have to shoot the painting but i've got to stun the little horn man first it's all chaos, and it's ten times worse on the C64 than it needs to be. Back on the Spectrum Plus 2. So we lower down exactly the same as the Amstrad version. The digitised graphics aren't the same. I don't think they're even digitised. They are on the on, in the middle there at the top. I think they're just hand-drawn on the Spectrum this time. In the game, there they are, digitised, but... I mean, who is that on the left-hand side, really? And we're running off now. We've got to get the Horned Man. And one set of Ghostbusters has one weapon, the other set has another weapon. So I've stunned him. And he's losing energy. He's losing energy. He's losing energy. Although my backpack's losing energy. Right, I've dispensed with him, and now Vigo, Virgo, John Virgo. John Virgo has come out of the painting and wandering around. I need to hide the baby. I think you were too late. Amiga version, really nice graphics. A massive jump coming over from the Spectrum version. Much better 3D effect. He, oh yeah, he's not horned. He's got a party hat on. Get the baby that that complains a lot. 
I think it's supposed to hide him and then destroy the bloke with the party hat on, then destroy the painting, then, yeah. I'm confused. It's all a bit too confusing, but I have completed this game on the Amstrad, I promise. He's taken, he's taken the baby back like some kind of... Oh, it's all going horribly wrong. Because the baby needs to be on the altar. It's all a bit ambitious, and... Even in the guides where the crackers of this game have written a guide how to play the game, at this point they're going, yeah, just go and watch the movie. But I've forgotten again, because the thing about Ghostbusters 2 is that it really isn't Ghostbusters 1. But then again, perhaps that could just sum up this game overall. Ghostbusters 2. Well, the Oliver Twins certainly put together a polished game. Not all the magazines were impressed, however. The 16-bit versions, well, again, Ace and Amiga Power didn't like it, and I'm afraid I didn't either. What makes for a good game on an 8-bit doesn't necessarily make for a good game on a 16-bit, and you'd perhaps be expecting a little bit more for your 25 quid. Let alone the fact that it's apparently and I've got a crack version that's bad enough. Disc swap central. The crackers have got the game down to two discs, but uh, apparently the Amiga original is three discs and the ST is four. C64 version, where there were certainly some sprite collision detection issues on level one, and it doesn't feel very good, which is a shame because that could put people off. Because level two is actually far better, and then we go back to a mess on level three. Zap gave it 39%. Can't really disagree. The Spectrum and Amstrad versions. Well, the Spectrum doesn't really have the edge on the CPC. It's faster and it moves better, but it doesn't really have that polish or quite the amount of digitized graphics that the CPC version does. It plays pretty well, though, and kudos to the Oliver Twins and the developers for getting decent 48K music into the game. It would have been so easy to leave those menu screens silent, but no, 48k, you get 48k music, 128k, you get AY music. Which brings us to the CPC version. 94% in Amstrad action, and, well, that kind of mirrors my experience back in the day. It was a game I played a lot. It was a game I actually completed. Hell, I've got no idea. No idea at all. It's colourful, it's graphically appealing, it looks good, the sound is superb, the gameplay is great. Okay, you can complete the game in about ooh, 25 minutes or so, but it'll take you quite a few attempts to be able to do it. The downside is, as with all these versions, is level 3 appears to be quite, quite baffling. Perhaps I read a solution from a magazine I genuinely cannot remember but i do have fond memories of this game and playing it today on the cpc yeah it's actually still pretty good however like the movie ghostbusters 2 even on the best versions on the spectrum and amstrad still isn't a patch on the original game